Welcome to our Continuing Industry Experts webinar series here at the International Insurance Society. I'm Josh Landau, the president of the IIS, and I'm pleased to present today's discussion, led by Peter Onomous, the founder of Dakadu and the Dakadu Health Score. Joining Peter today is Bryce Johns, the global CEO of HSBC Life and Insurance Partnerships based in Hong Kong. Bryce is responsible for HSBC Life's businesses globally, as well as the group's strategic insurance partnerships. Bryce is a fellow of the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries UK with over 20 years of wealth capital management and insurance experience spanning across Asia, Africa, Latin America, and Europe. We're pleased to have Peter Onomous return to the IIS. As many of you know, Peter has been involved in high-tech and biotech investments over the last 25 years, and this has led to four IPOs and multiple trade sales. The patented Dakadu Health Score and AI-based lifestyle navigation platform is being licensed to key life and health insurance companies and global healthcare operators, supplying InsurTech and health tech solutions to over 35 of the top 100 life and health insurance operators globally. Dakadu also provides its risk engine, which calculates relative risk on mortality and morbidity in real time. Please join me in welcome Peter Onomous from Dakadu and Bryce Johns from HSBC Life and Partnerships. Thank you so much and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And a big thank you for the IIS to host this important webinar today. As you heard, my name is Peter Onomous. I'm the founder and CEO of Dakadu. And I will today, for about 20 minutes, share with you the integrated insurance operator, what is coming towards the integrated insurance operator as we move into the digitalization of the global life and health insurance industry. Your host today is Dakadu. We are a Swiss-based global company. We are about 125 employees, and we are licensing two areas of the digital life and health the digital health in, uh, uh, integration platform and our risk engine. We just announced a deal with HSBC and I'm very happy today to have Bryce Johns as a special guest with us for this important webinar. We also just became Gartner Group Cool Vendor 2021. And when you look at it globally now, it's about 35 of the world's 100 largest life and health insurance operators that either use our digital health engagement platform or our risk engine, which can score mortality and morbidity in real time. So basically, when we are moving into this new economy, we believe at Dakadu it's a stakeholder-based economy. We believe that trust will become very important. We're seeing the next generation of consumers moving in. And here at Dakadu, we call it hashtag we care. So actually, as we know, a lot of insurance companies came from, you know, hashtag we care about 100 and 150 years ago. And we believe that this will become very important in a sustainable driven approach where the stakeholders will be very active in their beliefs of what products that they use. When we look at the overall industry, we believe we are now at a tipping point. This is from the digital uh, insurance group in, in uh, Hong Kong and Singapore, where they made this study a few months ago, where they were basically saying, as you can see there, or sync. So basically, either you are up there, where you can see the consumer's expectation, and you can see the warning from TDI that the digital tipping point is approaching faster than most people would have assumed. So we can say COVID was a terrible thing and a big impact on the global economy and many lives. All We all had family members, friends, et cetera, who got affected. But the good thing is that it has been changing the agenda and driving forward uh, digitalization in society. When we look at it from the willingness to share digital or wearable data, we will see here that there is a big change in society. The reason that I highlighted China is China, according to the latest study of one of the large insurance groups that they just announced last week, China will grow with between 10 to 15 percent over the next 10 years and is obviously the growth engine in Asia. So as we see here, 
And of course, it's difficult from person to person, but if we will go a kind of across the global insurance market, we are probably looking at 50% of all consumers that are willing to share data against getting something back. At Dakadu, we call this the something for something economy. And when we look at the latest study from last week, Accenture announced their global insurance consumer study with 48,000 consumers participating. They said that 27% of all buyers now are considering buying their insurance policies online. And this is up from 3 to 5% uh, 10 years ago. So big, big change. And we can still see in, uh, let's call it, uh, the more conservative European digital market, of course, still less acceptance towards digitalization. And we see the new markets, a very high acceptance for digitalization. The third very important point is the capital coming in. I always say that venture capital is a good proxy for the insurance industry to see what happens next. So last year, we saw 20 billion investment coming into digital health. When I founded Dakadu in 2010, it was less than a billion dollars of all venture capital worldwide. Even, let's say, more dramatic influence partners, that's an investment shop in San Francisco, I cannot prove it, they say that the digital health growth will be ninefold over the next uh, six to seven years. And that obviously is a major impact also on the life and health insurance industry. I think when we look at the industry, there are two things today that no executive in the insurance industry can forget. That's the CX, meaning the whole customer experience. So this is, let's say, from the downstream up towards the upstream. So everything that, how do you face your client? What are the value points you're standing for? How do you operate? your whole profiling, your risk management, et cetera. And of course, on the front end side, which is of course the whole CE, so the whole customer or consumer engagement, which is now changing very rapidly. And we believe that those two things, as I said, the CX and the CE would become of great importance to the insurance operator going forward. WHO is seriously concerned about our health. So they issued in December, as you can see here, the global WHO healthcare study, and they said only one third of all people, meaning adults, globally are 75 to 150 minutes active per week. We saw a downfall of 20 to 30% over the COVID period of people's uh, individual activity. So WHO is deeply concerned about you know, people not being active enough. When we look at that, that of course, I would say the most important uh, in the negative sense is obesity is increasing globally. So when I backpacked in China, uh, you know, about 40 years ago or close to 40 years ago, uh, there was no obesity. And when we look today, obesity has grown with uh, around sevenfold in China and we are seeing now pizza and burgers and frozen food. And we are not any better in the Western world. I'm based in Switzerland, where we can see that over the last 40 to 50 years, obesity has grown threefold. You could ask yourself, why is that important as an uh, executive of an insurance company? Because number one, 85% of all the people, about two and a half million, if I remember correctly from Economist last week, uh, have passed away with COVID, and 85% of all of them had one or multiple chronic diseases. So as we move forward, as an insurance operator, we need to look at where am I burning my cash? How do I make my client happy, etc. So when we look at it, hospital services have grown, meaning the cost of it, over the last 22, 23 years, has grown with over 200%. So basically, we are seeing a cost of hospitalization of being around 10% and per annum. And we all know that the global inflation right now is probably 3 to 4%. When we look at the medical services, we're looking at a 5 to 6% annual uh, inflation. So those two are areas where if you are a life and health insurance operator, where you want to keep very close attention 
on the cost explosion. The other issue is, as I said before, the activity. This is from Harvard University, brand new study together with Tokyo, and this was published in May uh, in the Wall Street Journal. And when we look at it, the average American today, age independent, walks 4,800 steps. An average Japanese walks 7,000 steps. A Swiss walks 9,000 steps. And just as a fun factor, Amish people walk 14,000 steps. What I'm getting at is steps is a good way of just showing your daily activity. So average women in America between 62 and 100, according to Harvard University, walk 2,700 steps. So here it is age dependent. And you see here that if a woman, you know, increases her overall activity level to 4,400 steps, that her mortality falls with 41%. If she would increase her activity, meaning her daily steps, to 7,500, that would be a reduction on the mortality side of 65%. Why is this important? Because this year we will see 130 to 150 million trackers that can track walking. So you know the Apple Watch, the Google Fit, the, the Samsung Gear, etc. So this is the latest number from IDC. And of course, all these could go directly into the underwriting and the pricing of any insurance operator. This is the latest study from Swiss Re um, after the COVID, so to say. So they say that the global demand for insurance is up with 46%. So this is no surprise because a lot of people passed away. A lot of people had higher health expenses. So this is good for our industry. Um, next thing is people want faster claim and payment. And people are overall looking at 67% of the people believe that the processing should be done in real time and they believe that this is a key decision uh, for them to choose an insurance operator. When we look at it, the capital markets, and I am a big believer in that the markets always, maybe sometimes a bit twisted uh, and not meant in a negative way, get the pricing right. So what do I mean by that the public market gets the price right? Maybe right now a lot of people ask me, I also gave a big interview last week, uh, to a magazine where they asked me, are the, are the prices inflated, et cetera? So basically, what are we looking at? This is from Stiefel, it's one of the larger investment banks in America. They have a, a subsidiary called KBW where they do their annual insure tech track for two days where it's only insurance companies and insure tech companies presenting. Their head of research public this research, so it's based on May data. And here you can see that a classic life and health insurance operator is probably um, uh, from S&P 500 priced around, uh, you know, anywhere from, let's say, 17 to 20 uh, PE. When we look at a digital uh, operator, and again, I don't say it's right pricing, wrong pricing, but when you look at companies such as Lemonade and what they all call, they are priced up in the 70s. When we look at it the year later, so this is the multiple of 2022, uh, you can see that the multiple is falling a bit. But my key issue is that the analog classical operator is trading with a discount of a 4 to 5x or a 3 to uh, 3.1x uh, compared with uh, you know, the uh, analog operator. Now, when we are moving forward, all these devices, they're gonna be IoT, they are IoT. And for the people that are not so digital, it means that each of them have a so-called MAC address. That MAC address is a digital identification and that can be tracked automatically into any insurance product. So I can track the blood pressure, I can track the heart rate, I can track the step move, I can track the body weight, I can track the sleeping quality. So basically, in my eyes, or in Dakadu's eyes, it's about an IoT-based economy, and the insurance operator becomes what we at Dakadu call IAAS, so insurance as a service, meaning basically that you start issuing microservices and dynamic products towards your client. So what are we looking at? We're looking at an agile world, 
there is a six step that you will not get around. This is from McKinsey. So basically, as I said before, becoming cloud-based, you know, online-based, becoming real-time based, having pre-integrated commercial solutions and modular thinking for products, doing point-to-point, -point, meaning integrating the IoT devices and driving the whole thing as a data warehouse. You have maybe heard the word data lakes. So wrapping smart learning, both AI and machine learning around this, and last but not least, create very powerful uh, data-driven products. The key three drivers today are being human-centric in your design, being cloud-based, as I said, and providing open APIs. So the foundation that you build on now is the foundation for the next 10 to 15 years. So as we look at it, it becomes a platform economy, it becomes AI continuum, it becomes ubiquitous, so you can integrate any IoT device without marrying any hardware vendor. And last but not least, as I said before, the something for something economy, which will work out perfectly because you will have different kind of data points. You will have the analytics wrapped around these data points. So we call this an outcome-based insurance operator. And then you will use gamification and behavioral economics to motivate the um, participant uh, or the consumer to participate in your economy. So basically, we believe here at Dakadu that there are three areas that you should very much care about. Number one is the whole area of connecting the consumer. So this we call relevance. So you need to build a relevant model for your go-to market. Number two, provide the consumer with something that they understand. So this we call the health score. So a proxy of your health calculated in real time that can go in and of course representing GDPR, HIPAA compliance, ISO, et cetera, but that can go in so that you give the consumer something that they understand and engage them using gamification. And you know it could be a walking challenge, a picture challenge, cooking challenge, et cetera. The whole area will be driven, in our view, by four different areas. Interactive coaching, challenges, as I said, personal goals, meaning rule-based goals that can help me lose weight, that can help me get better sleep or drink less alcohol or smoking cessation. And last but not least, very important, a private social network that is operating for the insurance operator without Google spying or without Facebook trying to steal your clients. What we are looking at here is a virtuous uh, circle. So you find the touch point, as I said before, you create the data lake, you build products around the data lake, you optimize the, those products and services. And this, of course, I call it the never ending a positive circle, so microservices, client-driven services, etc. If you are an insurance operator and joining uh, the International Insurance Society webinar here today, I personally believe there are seven areas, and it doesn't matter if it comes from Dakadu or any other company, you should think about what kind of social network am I creating for my, uh, for my users at a you know, market-driven approach. Number two, how do I create online uh, direct deliveries? And I just gave examples here, it can be other things, drug delivery directly to your home or blood testing at home. So basically keeping people away from the hospital, you saw the 225, 250% increase over the last 20 years. Data privacy is a must. And you heard what I said earlier today, it's about trust. If you are a stakeholder-based economy, which I believe 99% of all economies are, you want to encrypt the GDPR data, you want to encrypt heart rate, medical data, et cetera. Overall, you need to have a platform thinking, as I mentioned before. That platform thinking should be around lifestyle navigation and health management. That could be medical ma uh, management, meaning automated refills and uh, medical adherence. So you could have an Apple Watch and there would be an automatic messaging to your Apple Watch reminding you to take your beta blocker or your 
you know, sleeping pill or your insulin, whatever uh, services that the people are looking for. As I also mentioned before, there will be IoT devices for anything. It would take your blood pressure in the steering wheel. You will have sleeping sensors, etc. Again, all data encrypted, all data belonging to the user. And last but not least, and this is what we call the REF factor, the content has to be of relevance, easiness, and fun. And that way, you will create the digital stickiness we are all looking for. This is uh, from Dakadu, and this is from Apple. So uh, Dakadu believes that we are becoming an outcome-driven society. So after 12 months, and this is a medical study that we are doing, 64% of over 62,000 people for our medical study, they improved their health score over a constant period of 12 months. When you look at a similar study, which was done by RAN for Apple, for the Apple Watch, they said that with the Apple Watch, 36, uh, sorry, 34% of the uh, people participating, I think that was a 34,000 or 32,000 user study, uh, people increased their activity by having notifications on the watch. To wrap up today, I want to say that health and wealth is becoming more and more associated, and it's a great honor today to have you know Bryce Johns with us who's obviously from HSBC, one of the world's leading banks and one of the world's leading insurance companies that understands this better, which we will cover in just a few minutes. So to wrap up, my conclusion today is, number one, it's all about you know, insurance as a service. I don't believe that the insurance industry will come around uh, and just you know, offering, let's call it silo-based services and, and, and very uh, analog-based services, they have to move into this future of digital life and health. So the consumer, just like the experience they had in travel, entertainment and retail, they will say, you know what, if you don't move now and provide me online, real-time, you know, consumer-driven services, I'm going to go and buy my insurance somewhere else. Number two, the insurance operator needs to become an integrated insurance operator, where HSBC is a great example. So basically, insurance as a service is the next big growth opportunity, both for life and health. And those digital services, as we heard today from Stiefel, which is a leading investment bank, are priced a lot higher because they believe that there is better stickiness, better distribution, and better margins. And just as a closing point, I don't believe we can get away from you need to be a hashtag, we care operator. Trust is everything in the digital society as everything is transparent. So I'm very happy uh, to answer any questions. You have my email there for listening today. And for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes, I'm uh, very happy and very excited to have my uh, personal guest here today, which is uh, Bryce Johns. From, um, he's a global uh, president and CEO of HSBC Life. So uh, welcome, Bryce. No, it's a pleasure, Peter. Great to be here. So let's jump straight into the um, very exciting topic here on the integrated insurance operator. We saw over uh, the last, I would say, 14 months, the major impact of COVID. And, uh, you know, obviously a lot of our family and friends uh, got, you know, hit in one way or another and economies. And we saw that now 81% of all consumers are saying this will have a great importance on my buying behavior for health and well-being going forward. In your opinion, how has the whole COVID uh, pandemic affected life insurance and insurance operators as a whole? No, thanks, Peter. I think quite dramatically and probably in three key areas. The first one in the shorter term would be the, the claim spikes that we've seen as COVID has ripped through the communities, our communities and small businesses. Um, and through that, we've seen, you know, obviously a, an appreciation for the value of life and health cover, the speed of claims deployment, and, and most importantly, the, the need to be in good health. Um, and we've also seen some, some unanticipated exposures uh, for the small business community that have arisen. I think secondly, um, you know, COVID's led to a dramatic acceleration in digital engagement with customers. 
and, and that's manifested through a shift to remote advice and fulfillment, a requirement for digital service and support, and, and all of this has been happening while, whilst our employees are learning to work from home. Um, and what we've seen is, is regulators in Asia have been extremely progressive uh, in enabling insurers to make the shift in, in quite a tectonic way, you know, in over the space of 12 months probably versus, versus many years. Um, and then thirdly, uh, it's really put well-being front and center of what our customers and our employees expect of us. Um, and so from a customer lens, it's no longer just about fast claims, but it's around digital access to high quality health and well-being services uh, and advice, but advice not only on what product to buy, but how to make better lifestyle choices. Um, and then to empower those customers and with, uh, with, the, with the tools and the rewards to enable them to deliver on those um, through the health and wellness experiences that we provide to them. I, I completely agree. I mean, it's, uh, it, it feels a bit like it's a turbo rocket uh, taking off uh, during this uh, whole transition phase that we have all, which we also saw on this acceleration curve. So when, when we look at the market today, and if we look at the insurance that we know today, do you think it will ever go back to uh, let's call it pre-pandemic uh, standards, or would it be, you know, another world? H how do you see that as a specialist, Bryce? Yeah, Peter. Uh, so I think the simple answer would be no, and I certainly hope we don't. I'd love to get your view on that. But I think as as we've just spoken through, you know, what our customers, employ and employees expect of us has fundamentally shifted. Um, and I really believe that we're firmly now in the age of digital health platforms coupled with human-centered advice. Versus the product-centered days of old, where where quite often well-being was more of a marketing gimmick to engage customers to engage customers post-sale, you know, versus it being a purpose-led kind of proposition or experience that we're creating for our customers. Um, and I think that the, the exponential growth in wearables, telemedicine platforms, and the availability of accurate and trustworthy uh, lifestyle data much better equips us now to power these platforms with rich insights um, and most importantly dramatically increase accessibility to to healthcare for all uh, and that's a phenomenal kind of privilege that i think we as insurance leaders and uh, partners such as yourselves with deca do have at this point in history yeah i know that's uh, spot on and i i believe you know when you look at the global reach of an sh an hsbc you know the, the significance like you say that this is having so as, as we look forward now, at least from where I'm sitting, it looks like telemedicine and virtual lifestyle navigators and virtual, you know, healthcare solutions have gained market share uh, over the last 12, uh, 16 months. Uh, how do you see that? How do you see that role of the virtual operators, uh, telemedicine, blood testing at home? How, how is your view on that? Look, uh, Peter, for sure. I mean, I think telehealth has steadily been gaining traction with the pandemic playing a major role in its take up. Um, you know, and this is pretty much as we've seen with high, high street retail stores versus e commerce platforms. Um, and I understand that in the US alone, um, consumers have been increasing their usage of telehealth from 11% in 2019 pre COVID to 46% in 2020, according to McKinsey studies. So just that rapid kind of comfort in, in kind of dealing remotely with uh, telehealth providers has been quite, quite. Uh, quite dramatic. Um, and we're definitely seeing the same out in Asia, where, where uh, you know, telehealth is dramatically improving healthcare access by removing barriers such as distance, disabilities, and, and capacity. And I think the effectiveness of, of telehealth is, is, is definitely further supported by the Internet of Things, as you spoke about a little bit earlier, where, um, you know, remote diagnostic tools quite cost effectively can be put in the hands of our customers, and that dramatically improves the service quality of the, of the telehealth providers. I just think of, uh, you know, just the VO2, VO2 max uh, and, and oximeter sort of devices on our wrists and, and sort of the, the you know, the, the, the role that that's kind of played for, for home stage during COVID and, and getting people comfortable with their, with their personal health positions. Um, and then, you know, I think kind of the opportunity is also not only about the, the convenience, the access and the quality of the advice that comes with the these uh, platforms, but, but also obviously the cost, you know, one in terms of efficiency um, and the right type of advice. Um, but certainly even even on topics like the centralized drugs purchase and, and delivery for customers. Absolutely. No, I mean, you're, you're spot on there. So if we think about the good old days, I'm of course making fun, uh, you had preferred, non-preferred, uh, standard, you know. So it was very, uh, let's say, box-driven thinking in the insurance industry. 
And now everybody talks about value added services. And, and you know, how do you think if we look forward, how would you engage with the consumer? And, and you know, what would this look like in a mobile first uh, digital era? How, how, how you as an expert, how are you viewing that whole setup? Uh, Peter, that's a, that's a that's a great question, and, and probably your answer is kind of very much also a function of the age of the customer profile that we're looking at, you know, millennials or Gen Zs versus baby boomers, and and also by geography or by market. But but if I if I think about sort of health as an example, and and draw on some of the themes that you you had uh, spoken about as well, I think kind of you know, f first of all, a lot of the engagement go forward will be platform versus product led. Um, simplicity and gamification, you know, become critical. Um, I think to all of us these days, access to information and the ability to compare products and services and, and research ourselves online become become key. Um, I firmly believe, though, that um, that uh, insurance is always going to be coupled with human-centered advice uh, on, on, a, on a very personal topic like health. Um, and so, you know, being able to provide information, content, um, and ecosystems is as critical as being able to uh, to link somebody to link a customer to, to an expert to actually kind of talk them through. Um, sort of a, a particular health offering. Um, then, then I think kind of ongoing engagement and always on platforms that that, that once there's been a, a product or an advice experience that we really are going to have to work with our customers uh, in terms of their lifestyle, uh, in, enabling or encouraging lifestyle choices and rewards, um, but also being there to support them when health events happen, uh, you know, via telemedicine or face-to-face -face platforms. Um, I think kind of that's equally as critical. Um, and sort of adjunct to that, I think, um, you know, being able to offer customers access to the best of the best in terms of second opinions in different geographies from their local sort of health markets, you know, becomes becomes a, a really cool sort of feature or functional of, of this technology. Um, and then, and then I think kind of trust is another huge aspect that you, you touched on, on on it earlier. There's a there's a huge amount of data that we're now starting to ingest, but how we store it, uh, how how uh, how uh, accessible it is to kind of uh, sort of bad actors, and and basically how we use that data in an ethical way, are going to be as critical or even more critical than just offering customers access to a health ecosystem and platform. Um, and then finally, I think your, you know, your last slide around health and wealth, I think we're, we're all realizing that uh, the two of them are inextricably, inextricably linked. Um, and so I think kind of go forward, um, engaging, engaging customers on both of these topics uh, and, and encouraging kind of well-being in that space as well as kind of related products and services in an integrated way will be, will be, will be quite key. No, I, I think you expressed it beautifully. I, I was um, interviewed last week by the EU, and I'm not saying they're doing it right or wrong, but exactly what you touched on, they were trying to figure out what does trust mean in an AI-based society. And I, I think it's you, you really expressed it perfect there. So when we move forward, um, how do you think a consumer will connect and engage uh, in this digital world. Um, how, how do you think the relationship between HSBC Life and also for the bank's sake of it, how, how do you think the consumer uh, will engage with you guys and, and what kind of engagement tools do you think uh, it will look like? Yeah, Peter, that's a, that's a, it's a great question. I think obviously under the traditional insurance model, um, customers typically only engage with the insurers um, at a point of purchase where it's a grudge sale uh, or when they're unwell or at the point of claim. Uh, and hence the saying, you get sick and we pay. And so I think, uh, you know, a lot of the industry is still very much in the sick care versus the healthcare business, right? And then that's where these digital engagement tools really help kind of start to, to pivot the discussion. So I think by by adopting an integrated platform approach to engaging customers and embedding, you know, health and well-being features and services into the proposition, we can quite quickly shift the dialogue uh, to one that's always on, uh, and more importantly, one that adopts a positive tone, uh, you know, in, in terms of enabling uh, and, and rewarding customers to make healthier choices every day, with or without having to have a product relationship first, and that really kind of puts the customer at the centre you know, versus the product at the centre. Um, I think in the space that, uh, you know, banks have a very interesting advantage, and we'll, we'll chat about that a little bit later in, in terms of, of, you know, sort of currently very high engagement on core banking and being able to kind of blend financial and physical well-being. Um, and I think similarly with uh, employee benefits providers, where, where there's still way too much of a focus on 
Flames administration kind of versus offering access to well-being and health ecosystems along alongside that. Um, and then just the, I suppose some of the, I, I love the, I love the comments that you made earlier, earlier on um, in terms of relevant, easy, and fun, uh, and uh, and and empathetic. Um, you know, I would I would add to that. Uh, you know, simplified and gamified experiences are, are pretty critical in a lot of these tools. That that's where you, you may have the best data and the best. Uh, uh, experiences that you want to put in front of your customers, but if you can't find how to engage them in 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 in, in a language and format they understand, you know it doesn't work. Um, and then and then again, just these tools really have to be fundamentally secure, and and kind of the use cases for the data, you know, really really need to, you know, the highest highest level of ethics needs to be applied to that. Yeah, you know, I mean, when we founded Dakatu ten years ago and said we're going to build the global, you know, digital life and health uh, platform. We obviously also went to the regulator and you know suggested to them that pricing in the future would become more pay as you live. How do you see this whole dynamic underwriting and pricing, you know, as a leading global operator and a very successful company? How, how do you see that moving forward with dynamic pricing? Do you think it has a chance, like you know it from the capital markets? Will we see that more and more in the insurance market? You know, accelerator underwriting and dynamic pricing. Yeah, Peter, I certainly do. Simply as a function of the amount of data that's out there, you know, arising from advances in the understanding of the human body, the proliferation of wearables that we spoke about, the tele the telehealth platforms and the diagnostic tools, and and obviously the application of AI, uh, and and all of that ultimately, you know, is going to ma manifest in in dynamic. Pricing and or rewards currency on on health platforms uh, and and kind of you know currency to kind of engage on well-being. Um, I think ultimately, though, for me, it really needs to facilitate inclusion, better access, uh, and, and 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 equity. You know, uh, for 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 customers. And I think kind of these are the areas that that regulators, alongside security, that that information are going to be super focused. And I, I think kind of one you know one of the risks with a lot of the well-being programs today is that they they can be Exclusive and focused on on finding, serving, and rewarding kind of the elite athletes or the Iron Men and women amongst us, sort of versus everybody else. And and I really think sort of, uh, in, in sort of you know that that inclusive approach in a way that could facilitate easy access for as wide a population as possible, uh, you know, because is kind of paramount uh, is is a paramount use case for all of the data that's sitting out there. So last year we came up with this, um, or we coined a term which we call the integrated insurance operator, which got a lot of press around the world, including Forbes and, and Fortune and so on. Um, how is HSBC adopting to become a, an integrated insurance operator in your eyes? And you know, how, how do you see yourself going this way? Yeah, Peter. Look, um, a great question, and, and as, as you know, um, it, it's very it, it's early days still for us. But may, may, maybe I'll, t I'll chat through a few principles, and, and obviously, kind of one, um, the platform it, it kind of all starts with our core banking app as our, our primary engagement platform, um, and kind of through that, you know, we're looking to to integrate remote advice and fulfillment tools for customers. So that's either connecting to a person or using AI, uh, sort of for, for digital fulfillment. Um, integration of wearables and personalized well-being nudges and links to the bank's rewards programs, uh, and obviously, kind of what sits across that is a is a rich, uh, a rich, a rich data set when it comes to our customers' lifestyles, um, health products and services, um, and pulling all of these into a seamless and a secure digital experience for our customers. Um, so. Um, I think kind of that, that will be the first, the first port of call is the core banking app, remote advice, wearables, nudges, rewards, health products and services in a, in, in a very slick uh, digital fashion um, and in an environment that's highly secure and, 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 and that has a, a large degree of customer traffic already in it. Um, I think kind of secondly is we're approaching um, well-being uh, holistically, so, so not just focusing on physical well-being but financial well-being well-being and mental well-being as we think about the propositions that we land with our customers and that will then sit across life, health, wealth and banking. Um, and we're also approaching it inclusively, um, which means you know we're there in sickness and in health. We're there to engage the full set of customers that we have um, on our books. Um, and we're also very focused on accommodating 
modern family structures where, where, where we see a lot of uh, our insurance kind of peer groups are, can be quite exclusive in, in, in the way they engage on, on, on health. Um, and then I think kind of the final, the final thought would be, um, you know, we have a large commercial uh, sort of uh, customer, customer base today and a, lo a lot of the wellbeing programs from the life industry seem to be very focused on direct to customer. Uh, and we see a big opportunity in terms of sort of a, a landing or delivering an employer version of that, which, which encourages employee wellbeing take up uh, sort of alongside our retail customers. No, I, I, I completely agree with you. And the reason why I'm so excited to have a, a senior leader of your capacity with me today on the International Insurance Society's webinar on the integrated insurance operator I think what you are combining with your banking world and your insurance world is just perfect for the consumer. And as you said before, I was just reading a study over the weekend uh, from uh, America where they said that between 25 to 35 percent of all American consumers have uh, more mental, uh, you know, causes with the COVID. And I completely agree with you. You have to look at the consumer in an integrated uh, life approach. I really, uh, we come to the last question. I, I thank you so much that you took the time out of your busy agenda. And just one last question, Bryce, just to finish off this excellent uh, uh, you know, interview here and joint session. What would your advice be uh, you know, to other CEOs at your level in the global life and health right now? And you know, speak free, what, what, what do you think uh, are the key issues right now? Sure, Peter. Well, just first of all, to say it's an immense privilege to kind of be in this industry right now at, at this point and, and, and approach it uh, really humbly in that regard. I think kind of three takeaways from my side is that we really need to embrace the once in a generation shift that COVID-19 has triggered in terms of well-being and how our, our customers and employees want us to show up for them with purpose, not gimmicks in a digital uh, platform-led world. You know, we're no longer in the business of simply issuing policies and paying claims that, that those days are done. I think kind of second, the competitor universe is opening up uh, dramatically, uh, and this is definitely the age of platforms, fintech and health techs, wearables, and uh, and to all the actuaries out there, data scientists. So be uh, you know to be paranoid um, and 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 really kind of I guess also kind of choose to partner versus kind of build. Yeah, there are there are fantastic opportunities to really kind of accelerate our propositions with the best of the best globally. Um, and then thirdly, um, just our wealth is our health. Um, and, and really would encourage each and every one of us for that to be a guiding beacon as, as we think about building out our integrated propositions go forward. Uh, I'm 100% with you. So uh, first of all, thank you so much, Bryce. Thank you, IIS. And uh, we are completely changing the industry globally, as you all know, and we are moving into this uh, you know, transition phase just like we have seen it in retail, banking, entertainment, and Bryce and the whole HSBC team is definitely showing that they are taking a lead here. And I just thank everybody for joining and listening to this super interesting uh, discussion. Thank you so much, Bryce. And have a great morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you are as an IIS member. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.